So, we're memorizing Psalm 91 here at Stagnos, right? From verse 1 all the way through uh, verse 16, right? And it's kind of a lot of verses, it's kind of not, but so what we're going to be doing is, you know, because it is kind of a lot of uh, verses to memorize, we're going to be going over about two verses a week to help you uh, memorize it so that way you can get the whole psalm memorized because it is full of God's promises. And here at Staggernauts, um, we talk about being a Staggernaut, someone who does not stagger or, you know, does not stop believing in God's promises but always believes them. But if you're going to be someone who never stops believing in God's promises, you have to know what those promises are, right? So, this, this psalm is full of his promises, and we're just going to help you memorize it and help you kind of understand what it's talking about here. So, today we're doing Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, alright? So, here's what it says. It says, and I use the King James Version, you may use New King James or some other translation, but this is what the one that I like to use. It says it this way, it says... He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. So, um, it's it talks about dwelling in the secret place, and that's dwelling. That's like where you live. It's like, you know, your house or your home. That's where you dwell, right? That's where you live. That's where you eat and sleep and, and all that kind of, you know, that's, what, that's how you live, right, is... That's called a, a dwelling, or where you dwell. And it says, in the secret place of the Most High. And when it says the Most High, there are a lot of things that people treat as God or worship as God. And they put it as God in their life. But the God of, of the Bible here, he calls himself the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who, who wrote this book through, through a bunch of people. He is the most high God. There is no God that is higher than him. No one that's got more power, more authority than him. And it says that you'll abide, and that's also kind of like living, staying in. So you'll abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And Almighty means that he is all-powerful. He's got all the power. No one's got more power than him. It made me think of this, uh, this game... You may have heard of it, maybe not. It's called Sardines. You know what, what that is? It's like hide-and-seek, but hide-and-seek, you know, one person hides their eyes, everyone goes to hide, and then you got one person looking for everybody. But Sardines is where one person goes to hide, and then everyone looks for them. When they find them, they go and hide with them, and the last person who finds them gets to hide next, and it kind of keeps going that way. Well... Uh, I was playing with uh, a bunch of people one time on this particular property, and uh, actually my brother was the one who was hiding this time, and my brother went, and he hid, and we were playing at night, and he hid in the ditch. And all, we went out looking for him, and a bunch of people looked for him, and a lot of people found him, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I mean, I looked around, and kind of when you're playing sardines, eventually, when everyone you're playing with disappears, that's when you know, okay, I'm the last person who's going to find him. It's like, you kind of feel like this must be an easy spot to find him, because everyone else has found him, but I haven't. And I looked for a while, and I couldn't find him, man. I think I even tried calling him to see if I could hear his phone go off, and, and you know, try to listen for the sound to see where he was at. And I couldn't find him. Eventually, I did find him, and there he was, hiding there under a shadow. Because the way the ground went down, a shadow, and it was night, a shadow covered him, and I couldn't see him. But, I mean, he, was, he wasn't all that hard to find, necessarily, if I'd really been, been looking, but the, the shadow covered him and made him harder to find. And another time we were playing at night on the same property, it was my turn to hide, and I was wearing a bright yellow t-shirt. Well, at night, that kind of makes it easy to find, right? Because it's dark, I just need to find the bright yellow, and there he is. Well, um, but it just so happened on this property that there was a yellow fire hydrant. Alright, and so I hid right next to that yellow fire hydrant. Everyone thought this would be an easy thing to, you know, easy find, but
but I blended into the fire hydrant and so it took them a little bit longer to find me because I blended in. They were not expecting me to, to be as hard to find because I'm wearing yellow and it's easy to find yellow at night. And so that's kind of like where it talks about dwelling in the secret place. It's a spot where when an enemy tries to come against you, when the devil wants to hurt you with sickness or fear or sadness or you know maybe someone who listens to the devil because he's really the problem when people are mean to you someone listening to the devil is trying to hurt you in some way well god has a secret place that he keeps you from harm and it's like that shadow covered my brother and it was hard for me to find him when the devil tries to come against you to hurt you the shadow covers you and he can't find you to bring anything to you and that place is to dwell in God's word and in his promises. And he just, he protects you. And the next verse says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And if you think about like a fortress, you think about like a fort, right? Like, uh, you know, like back in kind of like the, the old west days, they had like, you know, the, the, the cavalry would have a, a fort, right? And they'd have these four walls and they'd have a guard tower up top someone would stand in that guard tower and they would look for threats coming and they'd say, okay, everyone go to this wall and get ready to defend against the, the threat. And they, because they had that, that view, they could stand against the threat. And, um, and that's what it is with God. He is that fort. He can see above everything and he can say, okay, this is coming. Here's how to stand against it. Or he will just completely defend you against it so it has no way of harming you. But it says something important there. It says, I will say of the Lord. It's important to use your words. The Bible says that whatever you believe in your heart and say with your mouth, that's how it comes to pass. That's how faith works. Like we said, stagger knots, they never stop believing or they always have faith in God's promises. The way it works is you've got to believe it in your heart and you have to say it with your mouth. That's how you, you activate, so to speak, those, those promises. So it's important to actually say to yourself, to encourage yourself, to keep yourself from doubting, to say to other people, and just to even say it in the face of the devil. Say, you know what, devil? You're trying to bring this against me, but my trust is in God, and guess what? He beat you. He always has. He always will. So I am not even afraid of you. And you tell that, and that kind of scares the devil when he realizes you trust in God who never fails. All right? So those are the first two verses. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. All right, that's Psalm 91, 1 and 2. I hope this helps you understand it better because it's important to not just memorize it and not know what it means because it's not really going to help you. But when you got it memorized and you know what it means, then you can say it and it's got power to stop the devil from, from harming you in any way, through, through anything. So, hope that you, you understand it a little bit better. Keep watching for more videos. We're gonna have more videos to talk more about these verses as we go on. Um, and so that way you can have an understanding of some of God's awesome promises and, and just use them in your life. So with that, I'll see you next time. And hey, yeah, I was gonna say something witty and I have nothing, so we'll see you next time. Jesus Christ, Jesus is a rock, you're a faith that's all make a stand, Jesus is a rock, oh, my soul, Jesus is a rock, unafraid your mind, Jesus is a rock and all your giants must roll, Jesus is a rock and all your giants must roll, Jesus is a rock and all your giants must roll.